you do this, I'll show you. Hey guys, Spartan117GW here today, and welcome to the behind the scenes for my latest fan film, uh, Jurassic World Acid Containment Unit. Um, so, a little bit of backstory about this, how this all kind of came together, gonna kind of walk you through different through things, a couple scenes, um, and kind of key you in why I love Jurassic Park, but I guess we'll start with that. I was born in 1988, and when the movie came out in 92-93, uh, uh, I was like about five, so that's pretty much the prime, like that is like dino DNA age. That is where it's at its height, it's ingrained into your childhood, and the movie came out, and then um, you, I watched it, and you know we got the VHS, and I watched it again and again and again and again and again. It was almost like I was watching Star Wars and Jurassic Park every single day um, in my younger, younger childhood. But um, I fell in love with it. I mean, it's just the cinematography, the art. I mean, and things that maybe I didn't appreciate then, but I really appreciate now. I mean, it's almost like wine. You know, it's gotten better, and I've been able to appreciate more of the movie over the years. Even the dialogue. There's things that I've even picked up almost like as late as this year by watching it again. Like, oh my god, that's ingenious. And you know, something I didn't really get when I was a kid. But I mean, just how good the dinosaurs were executed. And you know, I've seen so many of how they actually did the movie that um, you know, it's it's amazing the technology, the collaboration uh, between live on the set and with CG. It was it was really an amazing film uh, that I think really captured my imagination and just the, the idea of adventure, the idea of this prehistoric world brought back to life. Now, for as long as I've been doing video, doing a Jurassic Park, Jurassic anything themed video has been one of the things that I personally always wanted to do. Um, you know, I, mean, I even had this area by my house when I was a kid that I had like planned it because man, if I ever shoot a video, I'm gonna shoot it here. Um, so I immediately, you know, it was, it was something about it. it was, I've always wanted to do it. So when the opportunity came up, I met some of the guys from Dress Park Motor Pool, and I met some other guys who were cosplaying as the ACU guys, and it kind of worked out because since I do like the airsoft and the tactical side, um, it kind of finally kind of the bridge to bridges crossed because now you had more of a tactical element in the world of Jurassic Park and Jurassic World and then of course the amazing Cars players um, the guys from Jurassic Park Motorpool um, you know they want to do something too they want to do something where they collab where everyone kind of you know gets something out of it and you know generates awareness for their project I mean they got this amazing project where they're restoring one of the original um, RVs from the Lost World so that's ongoing and that's pretty cool I have a link to that in descriptions so you can check that out but that's pretty damn cool but you know it was just something we all love the movie and you know when I first met Alan and Ari and you know Manny um, and you know via Star Wars Celebration or at WonderCon um, amazing people some of the nicest people you'll ever meet and super helpful what I liked is that um, the Motorpool was another community that I can kind of get into that was kind of outside my normal bubble uh, and you know they're just the nicest people and they help each other out put these amazing vehicles together um, that it was kind of hard not to kind of immediately become magnetized to their community as well um, so ended up basically getting all these really talented people with talents you know, and, and who had uh, these amazing props and amazing cosplay and this passion for Jurassic World all coming together now there are low budget videos this is what I would call a no budget video um, I probably won't make any money off of this, and we probably, <laughs> like, we I didn't have any money to spend on this, other than, like, gas and the equipment that I bought, um, but um, it's just one of those things I did it because I loved it, you know, because I love Jurassic Park, so, um, you know, if anyone's out there saying, like, I'm, I'm making this video for money, it's not, it's not that. I did it because I wanted to do it. I really, at my very core, wanted to do this uh, project. So that's kind of how we kind of began our collaboration. So, Acid Containment Unit, um, what that essentially is, is I guess I would like to call it the thin blue line of Jurassic World. And it's kind of funny because a lot of the vehicles have a, a blue line on it, because that's kind of like the new theme. Instead of the red stripe, they got this blue line on a lot of the vehicles. But uh, they're basically the security force. They're the soldiers of Jurassic World. And of course, you have like the engine military guys and the ACU guys. They're more or less part of like the same company, I suppose, or part of two different portions of the same company. But it sounds like the ACU guys more so acts directly for Jurassic World and their role specifically 
is an asset containment, recapturing or capturing or um, you know, kind of helping prevent things. And the engine military guys, uh, I guess they bring them in uh, for a little bit more heavy contingency. They have the helicopter. I mean, they had AT4s. So they have a lot more weapon systems and capabilities. It seems so with them. But the asset containment unit is kind of like the first to fight, the first line of defense uh, for the people to park, but as well as to contain anything that gets out. So originally the plot was, um, you know, a couple of guys went into the park to secure some raptor eggs for the engine lab because they wanted to see how the wild raptors were breeding. Uh, well, well, I mean, they already knew, but they wanted to kind of see, you know, if they could capture some and tame them or something like that. Some kind of crazy plot. You know, you just got to come up with this stuff. Um, and I realized someday she would have raptor eggs, so it's just like, well, We'll just have it so Owen Grady and a couple of AC guys go into the park in the restricted area to maybe do something, capture a raptor or something, and, and something goes awry, and next thing you know, Owen Grady's freaking running for his life, and the two ACU guys are dead. Um, and that's kind of where we pick up, where the ACU team is infilling on a couple jeeps, dismounting, going in, uh, finding a couple things along the way, and then coming across the scene where the guys that supposedly went missing, and then that's when the ambush happens. And then, you know, that's pretty much run for your life, and then get back to the Jeep, get the hell out of Dodge. So it was simple. I kind of wish I had time to get more in depth with all the other cool things I really wanted to do. But I think for with the time that we had, we actually got some really good shots in, really good scenes. Um, I kind of wish there was more dialogue, but there's a lot of planning, and we didn't really have anyone that's like really trained actors, so kind of just went with what I had, and I, I really hope that uh, everything comes across pretty cool. And, you know, it's just, it's just for fun. You know, it's just for fun, it's something we want to do. And I think people will enjoy it. So we had three Jeeps from Jurassic Park Motor Pool in the actual video. We had 04s, which is Ari's. Uh, we had uh, 05, which is Alan's. And that's kind of modeled after like Nedry's version a little bit. And then we had um, 66, which stands for Order 66, owned by Guillermo. Uh, that one is actually, I guess, the most like the tour, I guess the beginning Jeep that you first see in the movie. But there's also another variant out there that I've possibly seen of, is the maintenance kind. But it was kind of cool because in the original movie they only had four, or two Jeeps, and they redid them to make it look like they had four. Uh, but one of the things I think that's really cool is that when you see these Jeeps, um, it's just it's something magical. When you see it on screen, when you see it in person, and uh, you know, I keep telling the guys, you know, the Jeep is not something, not not just something that you can enjoy. It's something everyone enjoys. When you're driving down the street, people's eyes light up. It really captures people's imagination, their attention. It, it and, and one of the things I've been telling the guys, it helps people live the adventure. Um, so that's kind of one of the things that um, I really love about the multiple and the Jeeps themselves. Um, it's just really, really just something magical about it when you see it in person. So we shot in a couple different locations. The location that we ended up using was about Santa Ana Mountains, the Holy Jim Trail area. A beautiful, beautiful area. At first it was very dry and then it becomes that very lush, forest, jungly uh, kind of environment. And that's really kind of what I needed uh, for this video. And we had a lot of different cool things to work with. There was even a fallen down tree that I kind of sort of partially ran across. It was pretty dangerous so I didn't run across the whole thing. Uh, but that was a pretty cool and fun scene to shoot. We also filmed, uh, you know, the portion where we we drive or in egress, um, uh, or in, uh, yeah, basically when we when we drive into the area um, and park our jeeps. That was really cool, and uh, you know, I, I have big props to Anthony Pearson, who was more or less my director of photography. He did a lot of really cool stuff. He was willing to do just about anything to get the shot, including stand there and wait for the jeep to come up and like park just inches away from him, and coming from like pretty decent clip and um, also he's hanging on the front of the Jeep um, he was actually pretty secure too uh, where he could watch the camera as it shot back into the windshield so those were some really cool shots so Anthony did a really really great job on that so there was a couple other scenes that didn't make it into the final cut um, there was a couple dialogue scenes um, you know you know the dialogue was funny but we had some issues with audio and it kind of jarred the flow portion of like the montage of the jungle and that that whole sequence uh, I, I, I like calling it the lost world sequence because that's kind of where I got the idea from like this cool trek through the jungle um yeah and it was significantly longer and I had to cut it down a lot like a lot a lot um but that sequence came out really good and I really love how it turned out and there's some really really nice shots in there um, and the dialogue sequences, there was a couple, uh, a couple funny ones, like Zach being like, you know, 
you know, have you ever seen a raptor before? Or Anthony and uh, Joe uh, Landeros were talking about, hey, you know, what does raptor taste like? And we were kind of joking, like, he says it tastes like chicken. And I tell him, I'm like, hey guys, shut up. But I think it tastes like raptor uh, or like a, like a turkey. Um, so, um, you know, we had some cool little jokes in there, but we were thinking, you know, I, I may or may not add those back in, but there's things that I was uh, thinking about that didn't quite make it. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of shots, like, from different angles that. Um, I had to, to get rid of to kind of cut down the film so it's kind of one of those things you know it's kind of like trying to slim down your baby but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do